Rob F. Martinez with Cage 360 Magazine, and I have the honor here of standing with MMA pioneer and legend Guy Mesger. Guy, how you doing? Good. I always hated that term, pioneer and legend, makes me feel old. You know, well, it's, do, do, I, do, do I have a raccoon scout cap here, you know, am I foraging out west? But. No, you don't. Actually, when I first saw you, I wasn't sure if it was you, and I told you that because you look very young. I, I appreciate that. That's what got the interview, by the way. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Guy, what brings you out here uh, to the opening of Boss Rutten's Elite MMA Gym? The opening of Boss Rutten's Elite MMA Gym. That's what brought me out here. I've been, a, uh, you know, listen, me and Bo Boss have been buddies for, uh, you know, about 15 years now. And, and uh, I'm very excited about this gym and, and, and what he's doing. And uh, so, uh, you know, I wanted to come out here and show my support. Uh, you have this close relationship with Boss. And I, I actually, not to name drop, but I interviewed uh, Hidehiko Yoshida a few months ago, and I asked him if he still had a close relationship with some of the old fighters, and I wanted to know if you had that relationship with any uh, other UFC fighters, any other Pride fighters. Maybe you call each other up and you say, hey, remember the, remember the SCG days? Wasn't that crazy? <laughs> not, not, not really so much for the SCG, uh, SCG days, man. Singapore Entertainment Group was an interesting, interesting group, but... Uh, I, you know, it's funny. I mean, the funny part is, is uh, you know, of course, I'm very close to all my Lions and buddies, you know, from training for years and years and I always stay in touch with them. Um, uh, but it is uh, the funny thing with Facebook uh, being so popular is that I've actually had more communication with some of these guys now because of that, because we lose track of each other and stuff. But this is kind of a, like, you know, a cyber address that you can always get somebody at. And so, yeah, you know, I've been, you know, talking to several, uh, some of the old, old guys and, you know, and stuff. So it's always been kind of, I say old guys, they're younger than me probably, but uh, um, they, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. You know. Is your Facebook page uh, a private page? Is it a fan page? If fans wanted to get a hold of you, could they just add Guy Mesger on Facebook? Uh, well, we have my gym, which is Guy Mesger's Combat Sports uh, Club, which is, you know, a, more of a fan page. And then, of course, there's... There's my private, well, I don't know if it's private, but Guy Mesger, you can always throw a, you know, ask for a friend type thing there if you want, you know. So. Where is uh, your gym, where is your gym located and where are you based out of these days? Well, my gym and me are both based out of Dallas, Texas. That's where we, that's where I uh, basically grew up and been there. We've, we've had the, the gym there for, you know, 22 years now. And uh, it's one of the largest, most successful gyms in, in Dallas and uh through a lot of hard work and um and uh you know so we've uh we've expanded a lot you know our gym is uh this is a really nice gym uh and here in boss's gym is really a phenomenal facility and uh my facility is a lot like this in dallas so it's a little bit more unique than the average gym uh because it uh, you know it's designed really to take mma out of the idea of being this kind of back alley fight club type mentality that a lot of people have and really turn it into hey how can we make this into a you know a more commercially appealing uh thing because what people don't understand is the real growth of this sport is that the average person gets involved in it that the average person can have an amateur career if they want to do that and that's all they want to do or they just want to be enthusiastic so it has to be a me there has to be a medium in which they can do that in gyms like this this is a beautiful facility but very everything about it has is about practicality there's nothing in here that does not you know, work towards really making MMA athletes or MMA enthusiasts and so that you know there's got to be that mix but it's nice and it's clean and it's, it's really well kept and they have the you know they have the best bathrooms I've ever seen in an MMA gym uh, but it all, that all makes this a much better experience for everybody and that's really where the growth of MMA is going to be. I, I do have to agree with you on the bathroom part, especially. I've never been in a gym with such an immaculate bathroom. We might have to take a tour uh, afterwards, but that's for later. Last I read, you were head of talent at uh, HDNet. Is that uh, for for fights for Friday night fights? I think it was. Is that still active? Is that, is that are you still active in that role? Yeah, I'm the president of HDNet Fights, which is the combat sports division at HDNet, and. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, my job basically consists of, uh, you know, working with our partners, making sure they do their, their end of what they're supposed to do and, and uh, that we do, you know, we meet our, our, our commitments to them. And uh, we, uh, you know, we have number one programming now on HGNet, and so it's very popular. I'm curious as how you fell into this position, or maybe not necessarily say fell in, but how you acquired the position, given that a lot of fighters 
uh, it seems once they stop fighting, a lot of them keep fighting. And uh, there's even been some remarks that I've read where people say that certain fighters should stop fighting altogether because they, they can't do anything else. But you yourself, you're the president of talent at uh, HTNet. How did you get that position? Well, um, I'm actually not president of talent because talent would be referring like we had athletes or something we don't. I mean, really what I am is uh, I work with our partners, which, which are the promoters and stuff like that. So, um, but uh, how I came in that position was I, uh, after retiring, um, I started, uh, you know, besides owning the gym, uh, which only makes X amount of dollars, uh, and uh, I'm a little bit competitive. My wife makes a lot of money, so I was a little embarrassed that I wasn't making that money anymore. So I started a consulting business, and my consulting business, there was two arms of it. One of the arms was I was uh, teaching law enforcement and uh, military, uh, revamping their defensive tactic techniques, or hand-to-hand -hand stuff. And that, that took off. And then uh, also I was uh, working with uh, various uh, MMA organizations with helping them develop, uh, you know, a, a show. Because I, you know, as I was a successful promoter and a successful, uh, you know, athlete, obviously. And, and so there was really not any aspect of the fight business that I did not know. And so I was working with a organization that, that it was with HGNet. And that organization kind of didn't really fall up their end of the stuff. And so I ended up working very closely with HGNet, trying to, to put that together. And uh, what that ended up doing was kind of impressing the people at HGNet. So when they were talking about develop, really developing their MMA program, they hired me to help them do that. And, and that turned into a conversation where I had directly with Mark Cuban about doing some more MMA stuff. And then that's when he basically hired me uh, you know, so I went so from being consultant into an actual employee, which was interesting because I hadn't been anybody's employee uh, for, uh, well, like since really since uh, I was 20 years old. I didn't know how to fill out the tax information. I felt kind of like an idiot. <laughs> Actually calling my accountant and going, no, don't make fun of me, but I don't know how to do a W-2. I want to make sure I do this right. So it, it was good. That was a little over three years ago, and it's been uh, you know, a great experience. Working for Mark Cuban has uh, been one of the best experiences I had. The t like two of the most intelligent guys that I know are, uh, well, I should say really three of the most intelligent guys I know. I was just kind of embarrassed that one of the guys is like half my age, but he's really a lot smarter than me, uh, is, is Adam Swift, and uh, who works with our helps partner management. Our CEO, which is Andrew Simon, and of course Mark Cuban himself, and they're probably the three smartest guys I've ever worked with. I've learned a tremendous amount about this business and a tremendous amount about stuff. And there's an old saying that even a fool looks like a wise man when he knows to be quiet. Well, I'm quiet a great deal, and uh, and so uh, you know it's been a great uh, great experience. Do you have to walk into an office, a cubicle, of any type of where you're at a desk? Do you have to wear a tie every day when you go to work, or is it uh, you go to work when you can? You work on certain projects, work from home kind of deal. Uh, this is my office. This and my iPad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we have an office in Dallas, but I, it's not necessary for what I do. Uh, I'm more, I, I do a lot of hands-on stuff, meaning I fly out, I meet with the partners, I do that, that stuff. I make sure that our shows, you know, run uh, as uh, efficiently as they can and that our partners are, you know, working up to their, their end. And uh, working for Mark Cuban is a lot different than, than working for anybody else. Uh, you know, I, uh, he is much more laid back. Uh, so, you know, in, in certain ways, he's a lot more demanding because because he because he expects you to do your job well, you better do it well. Uh, you know, and so and and I think that he allows you to have your own medium. There are guys that are in his organization, the suit and tie guys, and there's organizations. Part of his organization, guys like me, which are Jason, you know, basically, you know, shirt and, and shorts and sandals guys too. So, uh, but he makes it work. I mean, you listen, he's, uh, you know, he's not a billionaire because he's an idiot. You know. What I mean? Do you keep in contact with Dana White? Uh, not really. I mean, um, you know, I mean, uh, I. Never really had a big relationship with him because I, I fought mostly with the Cinema 4 Entertainment Group. But I, when I was supposed to fight Tito that last time, I, I did it. Uh, you know, I, I worked with him. And listen, he was all really good to me. Uh, you know, he was gracious about uh, everything. And of course, when I had the, the injury and everything, you know, he was very supportive of, uh, uh, of me after, after that. And, uh, and, you know, but other than that, I mean, you know, he's a very busy guy. And, I, you know, and I'm a very busy guy. And we really don't cross paths that much. Um, you do you still commentate for fights as well? Yeah, every now and then um, I you know do HTNet fights. I mean that's part of it was consulting. I was doing commentating for other shows, smaller shows, and now uh, I do uh, you know I, I do probably four or five shows a year now uh, for HTNet. Um, 
you know, uh, I did a lot more last year than I did this year because we had new partners and they were requiring a lot, a little more of my energy than than uh, uh, than, than I was, you know, be able to do it all, you know. So, uh, you know, now, uh, like I said, I, I did a did just did a show, the King, last King of the Keg show. We, I, I did, and I'll probably do the XFC show that's coming up and. Uh, you know, I enjoy that. I, I really do. It's 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 not a it's not a nearly as easy as everyone thinks. Everyone thinks they can act, and everyone thinks they can commentate, and they don't realize that it's really an art form that you really have to do it. I mean, even being an interviewer is a, like your job right here is is something that needs to be. Uh, there's a big learning curve to it. It's not nearly as easy as everyone thinks it is. I mean, there are a few people that I've ever seen that stepped in that are completely natural at it, and boom, I thought I was one of those people. I was very wrong. <laughs> but uh, again, I, I, a, lot of, a lot of thanks to Kenny Rice and Michael Chavello, our, our, our play-by-play -play guys, really taking time to work with me, sit down, hey, you know, especially Michael Chavello, who, who is phenomenal. He, he said, hey, let's, let's do this, and let's work with this, and I want to see more of this. And that's really where I, I had the biggest learning curve is working with those guys.